Allow me to welcome you to this year's KDE's Academy 2023. This is Ingo Klecka presenting a tale of Cleopatra, from sufficient accessibility to minor accessibility limitations. Ingo, take it away. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I will uh, tell you what happened in Cleopatra in the last year mainly. Um, so short about me, I'm Ingo Klöcker, I'm a KDE a hacker around the year 2000. I'm uh, now working as a freelance IT consultant or basically software engineer. Um, I'm working for uh, GTEN Code on Cleopatra and um, since last year, end of last year, I'm also working for the KDE EV as a KDE App Store support engineer. Then about Cleopatra, Cleopatra is the KDE certificate manager, so you can use it to manage your OpenPGP and your SMIME certificates. You can use it to encrypt files um, and also just your clipboard if you want to. It is packaged for Windows by G10 Code uh, G, uh, um, company. Um, those are the guys that uh, have basically uh, invented or wrote GNUPG the free uh, version um, of PGP. It's packaged as uh, GPG for Win, which is a free version, kind of, and it's uh, also packaged as uh, GNUPG VS Desktop, which is a commercial version that G10 Code um, sells to German governments and um, other uh, people who want to communicate with um, those German official um, entities. Uh, it is approved by the German BSI, so the uh, German um, Bureau of um, some Security in uh, IT, for handling um, EU restricted, or how it's called in Germany, VSNFD data, which is the lowest level of uh, security. So it's basically, it's uh, certificated or approved for exchanging encrypted data between companies and um, German authorities. About the accessibility, um, because of this uh, contract, uh, there was also the requirement to certify the accessibility or to, to assess the accessibility of Cleopatra. This was done uh, according to the BITV 2.0 standard, which is the German um, standard for accessibility testing, um, which is somewhat uh, or very related to the um, web standards, so the VACG or whatever it's called. Um, so the test was performed in January last year, um, and it was, uh, it's basically rates the accessibility for different uh, groups of users. So for visually impaired but not blind persons, it has limited accessibility for blind people and for mobility impaired people who cannot use the mouse for example, it was rated as insufficient. So there were in total 22 findings. They were rated for the different um, types of users with three levels of severity. We have um, addressed all findings of levels two and three and most findings of level one. Uh, the result was then uh, in February this year, the test was repeated and now it's at least partially compli compliant with the standard. Um, it has limited uh, accessibility for, um, or it's, it's um, yeah, limit, it's, with, it's, it's usable with limitations for visually impaired, for blind, and for mobility impaired persons. Um, the check for the cognitively impaired persons was not repeated. <coughs> and this is a citation from the second test. So compared to the previously tested version, eight problems have been fully resolved and five problems have been partially solved. I think a few more things have been solved, but yeah, um, of course the testers didn't find some of the things we fixed, but that's how it goes. And they found new things, which is good and a bit bad, but yeah. <coughs> so now I will uh, show you um, some of the things that um, I did. So this is the, the main view of Cleopatra, how it looks for most of us. Um, so you have the, the color which indicates some kind of uh, types of the certificates. So red is, this is not a good certificate and green is a good certificate. I'm using here the uh, special VSNFD mode 
compliance mode that's used uh, for the um, official version. It's usually not, uh, it looks a bit different if you use it on your machine because this special mode has a few special colors. And it has this um, compliance mode uh, indicator which is also not present in the normal version. So, um, and this is basically how the main view looked like for assistive tools in January 2022. Uh, so the toolbar is basically invisible for assistive tools. It's also not accessible um, for um, the keyboard, with the keyboard. And um, of the table, basically only the first column is visible and everything else is not inaccessible for, um, for blind people. Uh, similarly, this is how the details view looks like, so which gives some details about the certificate. And this is how it looks like for assistive tools, or looked like for assistive tools. Again, only the first column is visible and then the static text, which uh, lists some properties, is also not accessible. The third issue is uh, colors and contrast. So uh, in, on Windows, you can uh, enable a special high contrast mode, and it's a, there's a dark version and a um, light version. And this is basically a mock-up I did. I simply used clear, uh, dark breeze and um, changed some of the colors back to what they were before we fixed the problem. And as you can see, there is for the colored background, there's a really bad contrast, so you can't read it, which is um, even uh, impossible to read for uh, people with normal sight, but for people who have uh, problems and need high contrast, it's completely impossible. Also, which is not visible on this uh, mock-up, is that the, um, we used the normal breeze icons with a dark background which also made them pretty uh, invisible. Uh, and now, um, so that's, that's uh, basically the changes then we, uh, which we did. It's again uh, image taken on Linux, but this is also more or less how it looks on Windows now if uh, the dark um, high contrast mode is enabled. So we basically removed all usage of colors because, yeah, the people want really high contrast, so they want to have the maximum contrast, and so colors always um, get in the way, and instead of coming up with a clever way to do the um, colors, we just removed them, and the information is that the colors give is also available in the, in the table. And also, we uh, now um, also included the breeze dark icons in Cleopatra and automat automatically switched to the dark icon theme if the dark high contrast mode is enabled on Windows. One open issue is that uh, it requires a restart of Cleopatra, so you kinda cannot switch on the high contrast mode in Windows and then expect that uh, Cleopatra automatically adjusts. The testers didn't find this, unfortunately, so um, yeah, we didn't get uh, applauded for doing the changes, so because they didn't notice the changes. But we did change this, and it should now be usable with a dark contrast mode if you start Cleopatra um, new. <coughs> and now we'll go uh, through the UI of the uh, main view, a few things we did. So the toolbars, um, they, they said it should be uh, accessible or usable with the keyboard. I mean, all the things in the toolbar are also available in the menu, but um, they wanted to have them also available via the keyboard, so now all toolbar buttons can get focus, keyboard focus, if you press the um, tab key. And um, I also fixed the tab order because the, because the toolbar is somewhere in a different order than the main view. This is somehow um, maybe a, a bug in uh, the XML, uh, QXML GUI. Should probably, I should probably up, uh, upstream this. So um, a lot of the stuff uh, has not been upstreamed anywhere, so this is uh, still open. <coughs> I um, had a talk last year with uh, Volker Hilsheimer, who's the R&D director of Qt Group. Um, and so um, everything I show is Qt 5 specific. He said that not much didn't uh, ha uh, happened in Qt 6, but um, now um, I talked to, to him um, during Academy last year, so I hope that at least some things, uh, at least the bugs that I've uh, found have been addressed by now in Qt. So not everything I say uh, may still be open or an issue with if, if we go to Qt 6. 
Um, another thing is labeling. So really, from an accessibility standpoint, all input fields should have a label. I didn't uh, set a label for these two fields, so for the search field and for the combo box. But in other places, I added labels. What I did is that I added uh, set uh, at least the accessible name for the search field and for the uh, combo box so that they are um, read out by the screen readers. And also, I made sure that really all input fields we have in Cleopatra really have their um, label also set as body or the other way around so that um, the assistive tools know that this is a label for this input field. There is a weird issue with combo boxes on Linux, but I'm not going into this. Another thing which is pretty obvious if you think about it, if you, have, uh, if you have buttons which only have an icon, then you have to set an accessible name, because otherwise this tool is, has no idea what is this button about. Um, usually we probably set a tooltip, but the tooltip is exported as accessible description, which is not always enabled by all screen readers because um, yes, some people um, don't like the verbosity of the tooltips read out to them. So you should always set an accessible name. Then for the tab bar, this is mostly accessible, uh, except that there's a weird uh, tab order if you don't um, instantiate or create the things in the right order. And also there's an issue with, or was an issue with auto-hiding if there's only one tab, which breaks keyboard navigation. Um, so I simply disabled auto-hiding. And then we come to the um, table or tree view. One thing uh, they wanted is that you have cell by cell navigation so that the people can go through the table with the uh, arrow keys and uh, read out the individual cells. Um, actually, uh, if you do not enable row selection, then this works out of the box in, in Qt. But we want row selection, but we want cell by cell navigation. So this is not supported by Qt. So I basically hacked in, so I switched between the modes while the people uh, hit the keyboard so that um, it works um, as people expect. And they can go to the other columns, and if you go to new column, when the column header is read out, this is also done by Qt, so uh, people know where they are. Um, there was a minor issue with uh, the current item that wasn't announced when you enter the table and some other quirks. <coughs> Another thing was, um, yeah, open is this reporting. And then in the uh, second test, they found new issues. So if you uh, right click on the header, then you can um, uh, hide or show more columns. And of course, by left clicking on the headers, you can uh, change the sort order or the column by which is sorted. This is not accessible with the keyboard. So um, we didn't uh, fix this because we didn't saw, think about it and they didn't mention it, mention it in the first um, test. I mean, the one obvious solution would be to add this um, to the context menu or to the um, view menu so that it's at least accessible via, via this menu. <coughs> Another change I did was concerning special values. I'm not sure um, I should have done this because I don't know how um, blind people perceive this, but um, the dates were basically read as three numbers in a row, and I thought this is hard to understand. So now they are read as um, basically the long version without the, so basically um, the, the, the um, month name, which I think for me as a, a person who can see the date is more um, understandable if it's read out. Um, what I also did is for hex strings, at least ocular combined uh, consecutive numbers to a nice longer number, which I think is also confusing. So now each letter and each um, digit is pronounced individually, which is how you would do it uh, if, you re if you read out a, um, a hex string. So I hope this is also better for blind people. <coughs> then another thing was about these... Um, labeled values, basically. So that's uh, two Q labels next to each other. Um, Q labels are treated as static text from an accessibility standpoint. 
and tools do not really like to read them very often. And in, uh, I mean, in Qt, by default, Q labels do not receive keyboard focus. So people cannot move from one uh, label to the next with the tab key to get the information that's in the label. So um, what I did is um, I made them focusable. So you can now tap from one um, value to the next. And the other label is set as body. And now um, Qt magically, again, reads the label of the value and then the value. So this works nicely. Um, and I um, ensured that there is this underline, which also is not done by default by Breeze. So um, if a static text or if a Q label gets focus, you don't see any focus indicator. <coughs> then I did some uh, improvements for input forms. So this is how the new form for creating OpenPTP certificates looks like. This is uh, how the process to generate a key started in the past. So there was first this, it was uh, used with a, um, implemented with a wizard. And uh, queue wizards have accessibility problems because at least Orca does not notice when you change the page. It does not read any text there. Um, and then there are the fancy queue command link buttons, which somehow were inspired by um, some Windows Vista thingy were used, um, and they are also not accessible because the um, subtitle is also not exposed to the accessibility tools. So instead of fixing this, we simply thought, why um, don't we remove this entirely and simply have two actions, create OMPGP key and create uh, X509 or SMIME thingy. <coughs> this is how the dialog looked before, similar, uh, so or the S1 dialog sti still looks like, and for the OpenPGB uh, dialog also looked like, except for a few of the properties. So the bad thing is that you have required an option on the right side. Assistive tools cannot link this to the labels, so they have no idea that they should tell the people that common name is required. And um, this is how the error reporting worked. So as you can see, the errors uh, written down there. Again, assistive tools have no idea people with cognitive challenges also have a hard time to um, link the error message shown below with the um, input field. So um, now the required, uh, uh, if, if a label, if an input field is required, it's shown directly between, uh, behind the label. And the error is also shown directly between label and um, the input field. Additionally, the error is also um, added to the accessible description and the accessible name gets the special invalid data um, text so that <coughs> assistive tools directly read this information to the user and they see this information or hear the information they need to know about if there's an error. Another error. I also had it, uh, the possibility to add hints. So uh, it's also exposed then as accessible description for additional ex instructions what to do. Then we have this fancy welcome page which has, which, ha which has is a queue label, which has links. Uh, and those links are not exported as um, to assistive tools as expected by uh, assistive tools. But um, it just says something like selected or simply reads GNU PG. But the people do not know that this is actually a link. So this, uh, I fixed this for um, Cleopatra by uh, implementing uh, a couple of classes, which basically um, do what the web browsers do. Now, if you navigate to one of those links, then uh, the screen reader says link, blah, blah, blah. And the people know that this is a link. Another thing is, um, if you know widgets and line edits, you know that you can add actions to the line edit. So the clear button is, for example, such an in, uh, inline action. Um, and also the um, show, hide, passphrase, I button is also op, uh, implemented like this. The problem is those inline actions are not exposed to accessible tools. So they are completely inaccessible. You cannot reach them with a keyboard um, so bad. Um, what I did, at least for some of the buttons, I um, yeah, teared them out of the line edit and just put a button next to the line edit. So now they are simply um, accessible as any 
line edit. And um, yeah, I think time's up mostly. So um, I, that's a yeah, last slide. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> there are questions? Sometimes um, you mentioned ATSPI specific issues and ORCA, but um, as I understood, the certification was done on Windows for Windows. How much is that to transfer between uh, Linux system with ORCA and ATSPI to, to how it works on Windows? Yeah, um, thanks for the question. I mostly uh, tested with ORCA. I did also some tests then with um, NVDI, uh, NVDA, I think. Uh, which is a, an open source um, screen reader for Windows. Um, there were a few things that were special with the Windows assistive thingy, so UI automotive or whatever it's called um, nowadays. Um, the, most of the things were more or less the same. I think the problem is in the test they probably used still another tool. So yeah, that's that's uh, that's a problem. Um, I, um, while working on this, I, I used the source code of Qt a lot, the documentation, I used the source code of Orca, I had a brief look at the source code of NVDA, so it's really, um, yeah, you have to look at all the stuff, and it's really good that it's open source, so you can, s uh, can look, is this an Orca quirk, or is this an um, ATSPI weirdness, or yeah, where, where is actually the problem, and then you have to come up with a solution for this. Basically, lots of workarounds that I added. Hey, uh, you mentioned subclassing QLabel and some other uh, classes you created to fix some bugs in QT. Was there any attempt made to upstream any of those yet or enhance QLabel itself or something, maybe? I didn't really uh, any, any attempt yet to upstream those into Q <coughs> itself? Um, no, not yet. So I, I have not yet tried to upstream stuff. I should probably do this, for example, for the extended QLabel that rich test links are exposed as links. That would probably be a good thing. Um, I'm not that sure about other stuff. I mean, I found some bugs, and I, yeah, I should probably at least report them to have it so that we get a chance that they're fixed. Yeah, that's somehow I didn't do this. That's not good from my point. Um, more questions? Isadol, thank you very much, Ingo, for the great talk on accessibility on Cleopatra. Now it's uh, about time we head to dinner. There's an optional donation, about 10 euros for uh, the KDE. And the uh, food is for those who have registered on the Indico website. For those that haven't and want to have food right now, they should head to the desk, uh, to the info desk. Thank you very much.